are our standard costs? Those are predetermined amount. Predetermined means we computed them beforehand. Predetermined amount of material, labor, and overhead cost that should be factored into the cost of the product. Simply put, instead of waiting for actual cost to incur, company will have to determine, they will have to estimate, they will have to guess how much labor, cost, overhead material will cost them to produce one unit, whatever they are producing. Now, in this example, I'm going to start by produ by illustrating the concept of making a pizza, cooking a pizza, how much labor, material, and overhead should cost us. So how much should something, it doesn't mean it may cost that much exactly, it might cost a little bit more, it might cost a little bit less, and we will see why standard cost would help us in making better decision, but at first we have to know how much sh something should cost, whether it's goods or services in terms of time, resources, money, material, input, so on and so forth to produce that unit creating what we called a static budget later on. So standard court, standard costs are essential for planning. For example, just to give you a simple example to get the point through, if, if a restaurant is selling pizzas, what would they need to know? They would, they would need to know how much it should cost them to make a pizza. For one thing, they need to know how much it should cost so they can determine the selling price. That's one thing. But we're going to see what else is standard cost can be used for. They need to know the ingredient. What goes into a pizza? The dough. They need to know the quantity, how much they need to use in terms of dough, 200 milligram, and how much it should cost them to buy the dough. Now, keep in mind, the cost of the dough could go up, the cost of the dough could go down due to the market condition. They need to know how much cheese they need to use in that pizza and what should be the cost of that cheese that should go into that pizza. In our example, 200 gram of dough, 50 cent, 4 ounces of cheese, 80 cent, sauce, 2 ounces, 25 cent. And those are the ingredients for a cheese pizza. We call this direct material. This is the material that should go into the pizza. What else do we need to know? Well, we need to know, we need to hire someone in the absence of robots <laughs> to do what? To prepare the dough, put the cheese on the dough, put the sauce and put that dough into the oven, then take it out. Well, that's called direct labor. And direct labor, we assume it's going to take 10 minutes in total for a person to devote to making this pizza. And the 10 minutes of direct labor will cost the company $2.50. Now, we know the direct material. All in all, direct material should be $1.55 per pizza for the ingredient dough, cheese, and sauce. For the direct labor, we need someone, we need an individual. We're paying them per hour. It should take them 10 minutes. And for 10 minutes, the cost is $2.50. What else do we need to factor? You guessed it. The overhead. How much overhead we'll need to incur. Now, obviously, we're going to have some, some sort of an overhead allocation, predetermined allocation rate, and we determine that it's 30 pennies per pizza. That includes utilities, equipment, all overhead cost. Now we know the, pe the pizza should cost us $4.35. We say this, these are the standard cost. Once again, is this going to be exactly that much? No, but it's, it's a starting point, assuming everything works as expected and this is what is expected. This is the standard. The standard is the pizza should cost us $4.35. So in this session, we'll, look, we'll dive a little bit more into the standard cost. How do we create it? How do we set it? What's the purpose of it? Is it, is it set by management? Is it, is it set by lower level management, upper level management, so on and so forth? Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Hello everyone. Are you struggling with your CMA exam preparation? Do you feel that your review course is moving too fast, too brief, or not covering topics in depth? Well, if that's the case, at Farhat Lectures, we can help you. We build your confidence through in-depth explanation not memorization or reading the slides. What we will do is we provide baby steps approach to break down complex topic so you can truly learn 
understand the material. How do we do so? We offer video lectures, we offer practice MCQs, we offer true-false questions, we offer exercises, we offer the notes. Understanding the material is the first step in passing the exam. Once you understand the material, you have gained the confidence to pass, and you can pass with Farhat lectures. What can you do now? Start your free trial. You have a two-day free trial. Take a look at it. Give us a chance. Your risk is zero. You like it, you keep it. You don't like, you cancel. Give us a chance. We can help you pass the CMA exam. So the purpose of standard costing and budgeting, as I mentioned, is to determine what, what something should cost us, but also it serve another purpose. Using standard cost and budgeting, it will help management monitor and identify variances. What are variances? Variances are the difference between what you planned, what you think something should cost, and what it actually cost. The, what, what's expected to cost, remember that pizza is $4.35. This is the expected. How much did it actually cost? It could have cost us $4. It have cost us $5. Variance. So it helps management do what? Manage cost by highlight significant variances. For example, within the pizza, well, it cost us more, $5. Why? Now we need to drill down. Was it the cheese? Was it the sauce? Was it the labor cost? Was it the overhead? Allowing management to do what? Focus on exceptions. Focus on deviation to maintain accountability. So if the cheese is the issue, the cost of the cheese, we need to find out why. Are we putting too much cheese on that pizza? Are we spending more than what we thought? Are we paying more for that cheese? And if we're paying more, why are we paying more for that cheese? We thought it should cost us for the cheese 80 cent for four ounces. Why is it costing us more? Well, maybe the prices went up. Well, we have to adjust our standard cost. Well, it helps us to do what? Make a better decision. So it's a reliable benchmarking to what? To make better decision. You know how much it should cost you. You look at the deviation and you might have to change. Accurate variances also simplify financial management in a world of unpredictable costs and variances because you want to know what's going wrong. And if you fix what's going wrong, things should go, should be better because we live in unpredictable costs and variables. Cost changes all the time. Inflations, market condition, shortage, supply chains, disruption. Well, you need to know what's happening at all time to look at those moving pieces, at those variables that goes into your cost. Now, how do we develop standard cost? Well, one thing we can do is what we do is activity analysis. We outline the input and specify who performs the preparation, who performs the steps in producing the product. What goes into the product and who produces the product. We identify, describe, and review the activities involved in producing an output. Let's look at everything. What's happening? Activity by activity. Looking at how do we make the pizza to determine the resources. Well, you're using dough. How much dough? Give me the price. And the necessary step. What are the necessary steps? In completing the pizza, I need to use the oven. How much is it, is it costing us in terms of utilities, uh, overhead cost? And each production operation requires specific inputs and preparation. That's why activity is good because you'll go through the activity and you'll have one person, you know, going through and monitoring what everyone is doing, how long it's taken you to do it, how much are you consuming, how much it's costing us. So we prepared a what's called standard cost. Now, type of inputs, when we say inputs, the inputs could be many things. You could be using equipment, facilities, materials as an input, labor as an input. You have to look at your input. And there are various methods that can help you understand the cost of these inputs. One thing is engineering analysis. Engineering is what? It's looking like if the product is, if you're manufacturing a complex product, you wanna maybe ask an engineer, tell them, give me the pieces that goes into that product. This is engineering, looking at it from an engineering perspective, breaking it down. Or you could look at cost accounting data. You look at the numbers. Look, you may, that, that might help you with the in, in conjunction with the activities determine the standard cost. There are other methods as well, but those are common methods that you will see. So that's one way to develop standard. Another way to develop standard is use historical data. Now, the companies that don't have complication in their product or complex product that they don't need engineering analysis or they don't have the means 
to conduct complex activity analysis because activity analysis you have to monitor you have to study the activities and the input to determine this or if the company is producing something that does not change the, the activities does not change the variables are the same the direct cost is the same most of the time then you can use historical data to develop standards so that's another way to do it so under certain circumstances now you have to understand when it comes to material what's material directly direct material like for the pizza the dough the sauce and the cheese now whatever you are producing something else you will have direct material setting standard require balancing cost and quality consideration why because when you're setting the cost of the material as I mentioned when I mentioned the cheese well are you using more cheese and if you're using inferior cheese you might have to use more to get the taste so if you have a lower input cost so if you lower the cost of the cheese you bought inferior cheese well you might have to put little bit more cheese on your pizza to get this to get the taste of the cheese right so you don't you don't want to color it white you just want to have actual cheese so lower unit cost leads to higher consumption higher usage due to lower quality or if you are producing an item like tables, chairs, computers, and if you are using inferior product, maybe the material might have might break into the process, and as a result, you might have more wastage. Therefore, you would have to consume, you have to use more product. So if you lower cost of the material, your usage might go up. Okay, well, on the other hand, higher unit cost, if you buy super good cheese, you're going to reduce the usage of the cheese because you could use a little bit less because that cheese of a higher quality and you can minimize waste and spoilage. Same thing for direct labor standard. Well, if you pay your employees more, if you train them, you pay them more, well, cost will go up. But as a result, if you if you have if you are well pay, if you are paying your employees well and you train them well, your output, their quality of the output, they may get the work done faster and less time. So here also in setting direct labor costs, we involve human resources. And that's why it's a complex process because you have to involve many people in determining those standard costs, how much it should cost us, how much we should train them, so on and so forth. Now approaches to setting standard, just like in budgeting, we had the top-down approach, which is means what? It means the level the upper level management sets the standard. We have the same thing here. We have the iterative top-down approach and we have the bottom-up participative approach In the top-down approach standards set by management with little input from other employees and here you got to think about the motivation the standard that they set are they realistic uh, are the employees buying in just like with the budget the advantages and the disadvantages of a top-down approach versus bottom-up approach here what you're what you are doing you are involving various level especially lower level people who are working on the product, engineers who know the product very well, accountant who keep track of the cost, supervisors who knows what's going on, what issues employees are having on the front line, as well as employees. And I, I believe when setting standard cost, participative bottom-up is better because people who are working on the line, they know exactly what's happening. Now, the engineers might engineer a good product, excellent product but when you try to put it together through the employees it's a complex process so everyone has to work together so that the team development approach is a participative method where input from different stakeholders is gath gathered before management set the standard and I believe this is in my opinion bottom-up is better than top-down approach now when you are whether you are using iterative top-down or bottom-up approach you have to use certain standard there are two sets of standards that companies can use ideal standard and practical standard ideal we call it theoretical and practical is attainable so we need to know the difference between those ideal standard as the word suggests ideal is standard for production under perfect condition perfection maximum maximum efficiency nothing is going bad everything is working we don't have uh, employees are not, in, not getting tired, lazy, or incompetent. <laughs> Our employees know exactly what's going on. They're well-trained. They work the same energy from 
the first hour to the eighth hour machines are not breaking down there's no spoilage we don't need to maintain the machine they're working 24 7 at the same efficiency that is ideal so assumed work done by most skilled worker with no allowance for waste spoilage machine breakdown or downtime this is known as tight standard they can be they can positively motivate workers to achieve excellence and we want to achieve excellence now this also can lead to what negative effect because these standard ideal standard may perceived unattainable not practical so are they are they used in the real world ideally they're not they're not widely used because of their negative effect and unrealistic expectation you know that employees get tired you know that machines break down you know you're going to have spoilage and waste during the production process it's a fact of life now the ideal theoretical standard they could be adopted by some companies that adopt what we called conti continuous improvement and tqm total quality management principle it means what it means they're constantly improving they could use it as a supplemental standard to their practical standard just kind of keep on working toward that perfection which you'll never get there but they will they would like to work for it so the limitation of the ideal theoretical standard it's theoretical it's not practical for financial planning such as cash budgeting product costing or department performance budgeting so yes you know it exists you know it's there but when we set the standard we have to be what we have to be realistic it's replaced by achievable standard to ensure accurate financial reporting now what is practical standard or attainable standard the standard that are that are used well those are performance achievable by reasonable well-trained workers we assume that our employees are well trained they know what they're doing with allowance you got to give them some allowance for normal spoilage waste and downtime this could happen you got to spoilage will happen during the process employees are tired they could have a breakage accident so you have to give them some allowance for that when you're setting the standard so it seem as possible but challenging target so it's achievable but challenging which is good this is what employees like it has a motivational aspect it's more realistic making them better motivational goal for the manufacturing staff and here we're talking about manufacturing but the same applies to everything whether you are selling a service your sales team you have to set realistic standard for them the application of it it's preferred for effective financial planning and realistic performance expectations so in the real world we use practical standard not ideal standard when let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com which scenario best illustrate the advantage of practical standard over ideal standard well a company with frequent machine breakdown is considering setting labor target well with this could be under ideal standard or practical standard well when a company takes into account machine breakdowns it means they're being realistic this could happen practical standard i would say a is not a bad answer but you have to look at the other ones before you choose whether it's the final one a firm focus on maximizing efficiency in all areas of production well if you want to maximize efficiency you're looking at ideal standard i would say between a and b i can take out b a small business aiming for perfection well we say perfection you're implying ideal standard like i would say b and c they're similar c is out and manufacturers aiming for perfect record of zero waste in its process yes you can aim for that but that's ideal standard it's not realistic zero waste is out d is out as we predicted a is the best answer because when you're setting labor target you would say okay the machines will break down and as a result labor will waste time without producing anything because there's a machine breakdown as a result they're going to be less efficient as a result let's set realistic standard not pra realistic practical standard rather than ideal or theoretical standard therefore the correct answer is a what should you do now go to farhat lectures look at additional mcqs that's going to help you whether you're studying for your cma cpa accounting courses cost management or any other professional certification invest in yourself farhat is always here to help